So we got C kind of being the driver. Again, this is kind of the illustration of the vehicle in the sense that the piston is doing the moving. The connecting rod's going to pull that other crank arm around in a circle because it's fixed at A. And I and notice I put B in a nice position. It could be anywhere on that circle, but I put it vertical, which is going to make, make the calculation simpler. We aren't going to have as much trouble figuring out what's going on in X, what's going on in Y. Um, but acceleration adds a, a gigantic mess to this. So let's just wade into this and see what progress we can make. Um, and given that we're close to the end and short on time, I'm gonna I'm gonna launch kind of right into this a little quicker. Um, the backbone of this is no different than it was before. In other words, we had this velocity equation. Well, now we have this acceleration equation. If you want to know about the acceleration up there at B, since B is the follower, guess what? It's the same as the acceleration at C, but then plus the acceleration of B as it rotates around C. In other words, that's the same as the velocity equation. And incidentally, if you take the derivative of the velocity equation, isn't the derivative of velocity, it's change of velocity, isn't the change of velocity acceleration? So if I took the derivative of the velocity equation, that gives us that acceleration equation. So that's identical to what we said before. To visualize this and get our drawing done correctly, To get our drawing done correctly, again, we got to have a good vision in our mind of what just took place here. So remember, what this says is whatever what happens to B is first determined by exactly what happens to C. And so we said, hey, look, C is moving down. Okay, well, if it translates down, then did we not say that? Did we not say that B does the same thing? And so we said, I'm gonna have to erase this because we got too much going on, but didn't, isn't that what that equation means? B first then we'll just do whatever C does. If C moves down, B's moving down. But that's not really possible because B can't go there, right? B can't actually go there. It has to stay on the circle. And so the next thing we said was that it moved, it rotated around, boom, 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 boom. It's going to have to rotate around that C point down there. I should call this C prime, but I'm going to call it C. C moves down there, and then B prime would actually have to rotate to get back into this position right here. So I could call that B double prime. So do you see how it's actually rotating counterclockwise? It's going to have to rotate in that direction in order to stay on course, in order to stay on point. And so, as we said, it's not, this is all going to happen instantaneously. I mean, simultaneously, it actually moves down and rotates at the same exact time. So, being able to break it down like that makes this problem possible. So, slides down and actually rotates to the left. And so, what that means is, Let's go up here. What that means is this is, notice I'm being careful to draw that perpendicularly. I'm gonna fill this in blue here. In other words, that's the direction B is actually rotating it around C. So I can say this is B of B as it rotates around C. Do you agree it's going left, not right? Thanks to that drawing that I made below. So my ability to picture this is going to help me visualize this a lot better. That's basically what we did before. Okay, now let's take it to the next level. So I've got to disappear all this other stuff that's going to be in the way. And then this would also be then the acceleration of B with respect to C. Those two, that, that there'd be two vectors there, if you will, one for acceleration 
one for velocity. Now, the thing about acceleration though, is you may remember it has two components to it. So that acceleration up there is going in that direction. And actually maybe I'll start with, no, let's keep going with that. It actually has two components to it. So this ultimately gets replaced with an acceleration of B with respect to C that's tangential and an acceleration of B with respect to C that is normal. So actually, what, what did I just draw up there then? And that's actually not acceleration of B with respect to C. Which one is that? Is that tangential or normal? I don't think that's super obvious because this is kind of difficult to see but remember it's this this is the radius emanating from c and then this thing is going in that direction we'll notice velocity is in the direction it's actually traveling if you change the velocity you're actually traveling isn't that normal tangential i'm sorry i shouldn't use the word normal isn't that just typical tangential acceleration in other words this one is actually the tangential one because that's a velocity change where is the normal one in this picture? Where does the normal one always go? It goes aiming down toward the center of the circle. So this is where acceleration of B with respect to C normal would be going. So quickly, I'm gonna erase this. You're, you know, you're over here driving along this curvy road and you're like, bam, I'm right there. How fast are you going? Well, that'd be right there. That's your velocity. And if you decide to change speeds, that's your tangential acceleration. Your normal acceleration is aimed at the center of this chunk of the circle. Because it's not the same circle the whole time, but it's like maybe that center is right there. Isn't that what we said? So that's your normal acceleration. Isn't that what we said before? That's what I'm drawing in right here. So normal is the direction change. Tangential is literally the speed change. And notice we have a speed change down here. Like we're, we're told you have a speed change. It's going five meters a second, but guess what? It's actually speeding up at two meters a second. Okay, cool. Well, what about the other component about what's happening up there? Well, that's the way crank of the connecting rod BC is moving. But what about AB? AB is also a radius. Well, we said a second ago, because C is getting pulled down, doesn't that mean this is automatically getting pulled left? And notice it's perfectly straight left. That would be the velocity of B. And the acceleration of B, tangent, just like it was a second ago. And aiming toward the center, I wish I went to red because this is what stood out more. Aiming toward the center, wouldn't that be the acceleration of B, but in the normal direction? So there's two 90 degree angles in there. Now I guess I can't draw the second one in. Now we did this before. All I'm doing is just adding, frankly, acceleration to it. So it's like, this is my picture now. And so basically I've got to write equations based on that formula. Let me take you, because I haven't done this before, let me take you to the dynamics formulas, because I never even showed you these, but as far as your test is concerned, notice, I don't know if you bothered to even look at this, um, but as far as the test you're going to take this week, um, I'm kind of drawing that stuff in. Well, notice the formula that I'm showing you today is right here. So what was just the acceleration of, in this case, B with respect to A is broken into two components, tangent, normal. And that's the way I have sitting on the other page. And notice there's kind of a picture drawn of that, which I think is a little bit helpful. You're seeing one perpendicular right there. And that's normal and tangential just of what's happening to B. But then there's another 90 degree angle right there.
And I mean, re realistically, I drew it over here, like in the sense the other 90s over here, I just drew it as a separate drawing effectively, but notice B with respect to A is tangential and then B with respect to A is normal and that's aiming toward the center of A. So it's kind of like I drew it two separate places because maybe it'll, maybe it'll help you see it a little bit more. So anyway, that's what we're working on over here. Okay. Wow. Okay. So that feels overwhelming. All right. This is the backbone then of my equation. This is what I'm going to attempt to like not screw up now is to use that equation to write myself. Well, the same thing we've been writing, which is an equation with two unknowns in it. Or with kind of a horizontal and a vertical component. So, okay, let's give it a whirl. All right. So I've got a, let's do, I don't know, horizontal first. In other words, X. So our basic equation is, I'm rewriting it. A, as it rotates around B, no, what am I doing? B as it rotates around C. I'm just rewriting what I have up on top. Yeah, so A for acceleration. So acceleration of B, acceleration of C, and then I'm gonna kind of only write in the part that we're actually using. Acceleration of B as it rotates around C tangential and acceleration of B as it rotates around C normal. So there's my basic equation, except for I'm saying in this case, hey, we're only dealing with horizontal. So all of these are, like X's, I only want the X component of all of those. Now, staring back up top, do I know any of those? What do I know? Do I know any of them? Yeah, acceleration of B in the X direction. You're saying good things. I haven't commented just because I want to give you time to think, but but yeah, let's go ahead and throw some angles in this. We're told that theta is 34 degrees. So can you see, this is the first thing that occurred to me, can you see the kind of the big right triangle there? So if that's the case, then that means this angle up here is, what is that, 56 degrees? Yeah. So this is 56 and that would be 34 in case I need to know that. So, Yeah, all good thinking. Now, the, the only key is, in terms of not getting confused, is notice this is just what's happening. How is it? How is B accelerating? How is C accelerating? And how is B with respect to C? Like, you really got to pay attention to B, C, and B with respect to C. Okay, so let's just march across. Acceleration of B with respect to X. What's B doing with respect to X? Do you agree that right here, this is not moving in X at all? Because I got both of those to consider. But here, B is moving well straight left. Like that is the acceleration of B in X. So I could rewrite it as acceleration of B tangential because I really don't want all these X's and Y's. That's kind of what it comes down to because there really aren't X's and Y's here in the end. These things are moving according to circles. And so the fact that I could replace that with, I guess that'd be acceleration of B with respect to T and it's going left. So I guess I should call it negative, which means it's sort of speeding up to the left. So in a sense, it's accelerating in that direction, directionally, if you will. Um, what about, and Thomas said something about this, I didn't hear anybody else, but what about acceleration of C? What's happening to C? 
Yeah, it's going only vertically. So does it make sense that that's nothing at all? And again, we're happy about that, right? It could have been at some weird angle and we'd have to do sine and cosine. The same thing could have happened up at the top. And so, okay, I looked at B, what's happening to point B? Oh, it's accelerating to the left and down, but here our equation is X. And so down isn't part of it. What about C? C is going down. Okay, so it's not accelerating in, an, in X at all. Um, what about these other ones? Now, in a sense, I've got, you know, some ugly equations here, but what I'd really like to do again is get rid of X. I, I want these equations to be talking in terms of tangents and normals. And so now we're looking at acceleration of B with respect to C. And so I'm looking up here at this point right here, and notice that's not going left or right. It's going at some weird angle. But could I get rid of the X here by calling it acceleration of B with respect to C tangent by just modifying it with sine and cosine? What would that be? What's my modifier? Cosine of 34 would do it because cosine is cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and, and this acceleration is the hypotenuse. So cosine of 34 would give me sort of the left-hand version of whatever that is. So it's aiming left and cosine of 34 would limit it to the X component. And again, notice it's going left. So that means I should go back here and say, oh, that's not actually positive. That's actually negative. Now that didn't really help anything in the sense that in the sense that it's still an unknown, but does it make sense when I move to the Y equations in a minute, I'll be able to do the same thing. And that way they'll be, these two equations we're gonna write, will be able to talk to each other. That's why we're doing this. And then what about the normal component? Is the, nor what's, what's the normal component of B, C, N? Again, I'm looking at this right here. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm looking at this right here and saying, oh yeah, there's the normal component. Look, there it is right there. But I need the X portion of that, right? Just like a second ago, this acceleration up here was going in some weird direction. Now I'm saying, oh, look at that one. That's what we're looking at now. We're looking at the normal component of B over C. And can you see how if I didn't get that original drawing labeled right, I would have no hope here because this is hard enough even with it labeled correctly. So it's like, oh yeah, yeah, B over C, B as it rotates around C in the normal direction. Oh, there it is. Oh, but I only need the X component. So how do I modify that? That would be also to get the horizontal component here, it'd be the cosine of 56. And it's, and it's negative since it's going left as well. So yeah. that'd be modified by the cosine of 56. That'd be negative. And so there's my first equation. And it's very not satisfying in the sense that it's got three unknowns still. It's not like that's wonderful. In a sense, today, today is really going to be a dizzying display of algebraic acumen. This is awful. This is terrible. Like this. But if you can speak the language of algebra, it's not that intimidating. It's like, okay, well, we got a three equation with three unknowns. Let's just keep going and see how many equations we can write. Now that I have an equation with three unknowns, I'm thinking to myself algebraically, if I could get three of these, then I'd be great. But yeah, but what are we going to do? Like X, we got X and Y. And so we're not going to get three equations out of this, are we? So it's like, uh oh, this is not good. And this isn't a 3D drawing, so we can't get Z involved. So that should feel kind of like, uh oh, this isn't really going to work that good. Well, let's jump to vertical. See if we can do the same thing. Again, I've got the same issue here. I'm going to write out the same exact equation, just like we did before. Acceleration of B equals acceleration of C. plus acceleration of B with respect to C tangent plus acceleration of B with respect to C normal. There's my equation. Same one we started with in the last problem, except for this time we're saying I only want Y. I'm interested in what's happening in the Y direction of all of those, right? 
So what equation is that going to produce for us? Yeah. So again, I've, I've, I've got to slow down here and think, okay, acceleration of B, what's happening to B? Well, there's B right there. How is it accelerating? Well, it's accelerating. Just B is accelerating this way, right? Well, no, it's accelerating this way and this way, isn't it? That's what be happening to be. It's got both of those. Well, a second ago, the X direction, it was acceleration of B tangent. But what is it in this case? Well, that's the normal. In other words, these, because of where I drew this, that tangent was the acceleration of B in the X direction. What's the acceleration of B in the Y direction? That's that acceleration of B normal. Yeah, and we're, we are, because we're saying X and Y, we're talking vertical and horizontal here. So that's downward. I mean, we do have to distinguish between what direction it's going. And so that's exactly right. That would be downward. Now, again, I, I find myself going, well, this really sucks because notice that original problem up there. Did you see any acceleration of B normals up there? Like we just got a brand new variable. <laughs> like this is even getting worse. I mean, I was at least hoping to have an equation with all the same variables, right? And then I'd have two equations and three unknowns. Well, that just gave me a brand new variable. So now I've got four unknowns. Hmm. It's terrible. What about acceleration of C? Again, slow down. What's C? Oh, C is right there. How is it accelerating in the Y direction? Oh, straight down two. So, just like last time, it had no acceleration in the X direction, but it is going vertically. So it does have an acceleration in the Y direction. And again, it's also negative. So it's heading down. And now we need to do the same thing we just did. We need to look at acceleration of B with respect to C tangential and acceleration of B with respect to C normal. But again, we'd like to get the X out of it because can you see that this is gonna be a match? Like these, these unknowns up here, we're gonna get the same unknowns now. What I don't want is to leave X in this one and Y in this one because they can't speak to each other. But if I can rewrite them both without the X and the Y in them by, the, by these trig modifications, then at least they'll have these unknowns in common. You see what I'm saying? You see why we did that before? But what modification of B with respect to C tangential? Again, where's B with respect to C tangential? Oh, it's right there. There it is. But I need the vertical component of that. How do I get the vertical component of that blue vector right there? It's sine of 34 and it's going up, so it'd be positive. Do you agree with that? So the last one was cosine of 34. This is the sine of 34. And then I say, okay, cool. Well, what's happening with B with respect to C in the N direction? Oh yeah, that's right. That's this one here, but I'm talking Y. So I need the Y component of this, the Y component of that, just like this was cosine of 56, that's going to be the sine of 56. So it'll always kind of be the opposite trig expression. So this is going to be the sine of 56. That will not do. Nice job. And it's going down, so that's going to be negative. So I wrote now my second equation. But at this point, I've actually got two equations, but I've got four unknowns. And so that's not good. I don't even have two equations, three unknowns. But as I said before, and it's kind of important to, to note this, at least these match now. Acceleration of B, C, T. Hey, look, exactly the same expression. A, C, B, N, A, C, B, N. At least they have those in common. Do you understand how, like, that's exactly why I got cosine involved, because then those two can speak to each other. If I would have left these equations alone back here, 
it would have been two equations, eight unknowns. Well, we lost a zero and a two. It would have been two equations, six unknowns. So by modifying this with cosine, at least it's two equations, four unknowns, and not two equations, six unknowns. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, and that's kind of that's kind of where this is going. But let me just show you something in your note sheet that you know but haven't thought about for a while. Um, but we know some stuff about tangential and normal acceleration. Let me erase kind of my highlights and sort of start over on those. But don't we have an equation that tells us about tangential acceleration? I mean, for what it's worth. And an equation that tells us about normal acceleration. So notice that second one, for instance, is saying, hey, if you knew the velocity, which we knew from the last time we studied this, we haven't done it with this one, but if we knew the velocity, then we could square it, divide by the radius, and we'd actually know the normal acceleration. That right there is going to be a third equation that we're going to be able to write here. And then, yeah, like what's the, you know, where's the fourth equation going to come from? We'll talk about that too. Um, but we know some things about tangential and normal acceleration. That's where these other equations are going to come from. So it's not going to be going 3D. We're just, that's why I said ultimately this is a, this is a really algebraic, Kind of a process. Your your chances of getting this right based on step one, step two, you know, are really low. You just have to kind of write equations out and then recognize where you are. Mm, two equations, four knowns. Ooh, that's not good. The fact that I have four knowns means I'm somehow going to have to come up with another equation. Two, actually. Let's see if we can do that. turns out this will be three and four because we'll have acceleration of b and we'll have acceleration of b with respect to c because that's what we're working on right now right we got b moving we got c moving so if we can sort of find b squared over r for both of those and those will be different velocities because B is moving at a different speed than B with respect to C is, then that's going to give me my other two equations. And so it's really, it's really this second equation here that we're focusing our attention on. And I and I have two choices. Like if, if I happen to know the angular, remember omega was angular speed. But do you see how it, it now, if you will, kind of hints at the fact that we've got to go back to what we did last time and figure out that velocity right there from what we did before. And for that reason, the best way to do these problems is actually to start by just doing what we did yesterday to the problem first and like build those ingredients and then we'll be able to use them later on. And it's kind of like, you know, making a recipe, you just start making stuff and it's like, oh crap, I need something. And then you drive to the store, like look at the recipe first, get all the junk you need, you know, it's all there. And then you start building it. In our case, we just kind of did, we did what somewhat makes sense to do. And now we're saying, wow, I'm stuck. You know, I've got two equations, four unknowns here. How am I going to get some other ones? Mm. Well, let's go try to get them. So since we said that acceleration normal is equal to B squared over R as kind of our foundational equation here, Let's think about what that would mean. I'm going to think about how to write this so it looks kind of clear. Well, I could say in our in the what I just highlighted is kind of the generic equation, but let's let's make it specific to what we're doing now. So if I said acceleration of B normal, and why am I doing that? Because 
that's the same as this one, all right? There, that's the unknown I'm attacking right there. I'm saying, well, yeah, I can, I can figure that out based on what we just said. That'd be the velocity of, well, not just anything, but B, right? Velocity of B, we're talking about B here. And that has to be squared, and that would be divided by what radius? What radius is that? If I'm talking about how B is moving, exactly right. B is this guy, right? He's moving in this direction, so that's his radius. So I need A, B. I need that radius right there. That's the radius we're talking about if we're talking about how B is moving, right? So I'm even going to write that in there, just like A, B. Yeah, we'll start that in a second. And then don't we also have acceleration of B with respect to C? N, remember I'm sticking with N because N is the formula that gave us V squared over R. The other one asked us to know the angular acceleration. I don't know that, so that's why I'm sticking with this one. So, you know, what are we attacking here? Well, here, here I'm looking at, let's try B. No, that doesn't work, too bright. Light colors, gray, very exciting. Never tried this, that's oh, okay. Do we have that somewhere? Yeah, isn't it here and here? And so again, it's equal to V squared over R, but you know, what velocity are we talking about there? Well, this time we're not talking about B, we're talking about B with respect to C. And what radius is that? If we're looking back up here, we're talking about this velocity, right? Velocity of B with respect to C, then isn't its radius the perpendicular radius? So that's BC, do you see that? So to kind of highlight where we are, we're basically saying this is equation number three, this is equation number four, and now I'm going to have four equations and four unknowns, and I'm going to be able to solve this then, thanks to those two normal acceleration equations that depend on velocity. The problem is I just need the ingredients, right? I need the velocity of B and I need the velocity of B with respect to C. Those two radiuses are given as a part of the geometry of the, of the problem. So let's go ahead and throw those in now. The radius of A, B was 1.5 and the other was 5.8. But now we need those two velocities. And remember, that's what we tackled last time. We said, okay, great. We know, in this case, we know what's happening down here with respect to velocity. Oh, look, it's five. But we want to know, thanks to this connecting rod that's connected up here, what's going to happen at B up there? Well, I need those two velocities then. So it's like, what am I after now? I'm after that velocity right there and that velocity right there. That's, the, that's what I needed from those previous problems. That's what I'm after now. How do I get that? Well, let's... Let's use the uh, let's use the instantaneous center of rotation method from last time to figure out what those two velocities are. So if I come down perpendicular to the green line and I take off perpendicular to the C direction, I land right there. That's my I or my ICR. And that's nice because that's a right triangle. Again, this is because I drew this, because I drew B straight up, that made this really nice. And so, and I know some things about that right triangle. I know that that hypotenuse BC, we said earlier was 5.8. And since that angle is 34 degrees, then isn't this angle right here 56 degrees? And so I, I, I own that right triangle now. I know the right angle and 
I can just use basic trig. I don't need law of sines, law of cosines. So if I said 5.8 times the cosine of 56, Five point eight times the cosine of fifty six. That gives me two point or three point two four for this length. If I say five point eight times the sine of fifty six, I get four point eight one. See what kind of space we have here. I think we got room to do it down below. So didn't we say last time, and this is, let's go look at your note sheet really quick while you're kind of processing that. If you use the ICR technique, what we looked at last time is the velocity of one of them divided by its radius will match the velocity of the other divided by its radius because they will have their angular velocities in common. Because at that moment in time, they're both rotating around the same point, they're gonna share the same angular velocity. And again, that's me sitting in this chair right now because I'm physically attached to myself. The tip of my arm is moving at the same angular velocity as the tip of my nose, right? If they're connected, that's what's gonna happen. So they're sharing that because I'm rotating around this center of rotation like right under the chair. So that's why that's true. So I can say the velocity of one, divided by the other is the same as the velocity of the other. Okay, so cool. Let's go see if we can. So let's add this to the notes here. Velocity. In our case, let's see, that'd be the velocity of B divided by the radius of AB. Is that right? Is it going to equal the velocity of what's the other one? Well, I'm going a little fast here, but really what we're talking about is bi, like this radius, this radius, and its velocity. What's its velocity? Oh, that's velocity of b. This radius and its velocity will match this radius and its velocity. So, let me draw that in in red. So I'm saying this radius and that velocity will match this radius and its velocity. And that should be up. Well, I'll go ahead and put it up there. This radius and its velocity. Oh, okay. So it's not really, it's CI and BI that we're talking about here in our case. Okay, I see. So notice up here, the velocity of B and then the radius of B I. I'll try to get where you can see both of those at the same time. And then the other one is the velocity of C divided by the radius of C I. So in our case, we can say, hey, I just found those two radiuses. The radius of CI was 3.24. The radius of BI was 4.81. The velocity of C, I know it was five. That was a given, but the velocity of B, I don't know, aha. This is how I'm going to get that velocity of B right there. So if I take 4.81, apparently, times 5 divided by 3.24, I get 7.42. Velocity of B is 7.42. All right, there we go. If I square that and divide it by 1.5, acceleration of B in the N direction, seven, and it's still sitting in my calculator, so I'm just gonna leave it in there, squared divided by 
I got like 36.73. So my third equation just turned into a constant, like, ooh, sweet. And that original two equations, two, two equations for unknowns up there, I now know this is no longer just a number, is, is no longer a variable. It's now 36, right? So that's kind of cool. Yeah, let's get that. See if I can squeeze this all in here. So yeah, what about what about the other one? I'm I'm sort of thinking with you now because I'm thinking, well, we, yeah, we did that. We did that up here, but it's like now I need now I need this one, right? Now I need this velocity. So it's like, how do I get how do I get that velocity? Do what? No, because this this right here, the 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 velocity of it, if this is your radius, the velocity has to be perpendicular to that. So this triangle is only going to work to get us the one we got. Hmm. Start. Think about this. Remember, and this was on the other page too, that we said there was a conversion between angular velocity and linear velocity. What do you have to do according to your note sheet to get linear velocity converted to angular velocity or back and forth. Oh. Multiply that by the radius. In other words, we calculated this before, but since the angular velocity right there of B as it rotates around C, that's something we had to calculate before. That was something else we calculated with those velocities you may remember. Because we said, hey, you know, how fast is all this rotating? It's cool that we just found the velocity of B, but we also were interested in perhaps how fast is this rotating up here? What's its angular velocity? Like we, we're interested in that, but we may also be interested in how this crank arm is rotating. Well, thanks to this equation right here, does it make sense if I knew this angular velocity right here and I know that radius? This is saying, oh, just multiply them and then you'll know the velocity and the velocity is perpendicular to that. So let's see, I'm staring at the way I did this before to see if Trying to see if there's an easier way to do this than what I'm about to do before I do it. Well, there might be. Let's try this. So with respect to velocity from sort of last time, didn't we say that Velocity of what order was this in? B. 
the velocity of B is the same as the velocity of C plus the velocity of C as it rotates around B. Do I have that right? Or is that upside down? Is it, I'm looking back. I could go look at the note sheet, but I'm just looking at what we have right here. So it was, if you want to know what's happening at B, it's what's happening at C and then B divided by C. So I think I have upside down. So it's B divided by C. In other words, oh yeah, my, my thought now is like, oh yeah, duh, isn't it B that's rotating around C? So didn't we have that? That was our equation for velocity. Well, hey, maybe this is the key then because now that we just got done figuring out back here the velocity of B, then that's the velocity of B. Like, hey, maybe this is a way to convert the velocity of B into the velocity of B over C. So maybe I don't even need that angular formula that I just wrote up there. Like maybe this is the key right here. Now you may remember though that like I've got to kind of think about this in terms of X and Y in order to get this to work. So I'm looking up here thinking, well, look, the velocity of B up there is actually horizontal. It's X. So maybe I'll do this with X. Maybe I'll write an equation in X and that'll allow me to do this. So let's see what happens if we try that. So velocity of B in the X direction equals velocity of C in the X direction plus the velocity of B with respect to C in the X direction. Hmm. I just got done figuring out the velocity of B in the X direction. It was 7.42. Now, is it negative? Do I need to think about that? I'm sort of thinking out loud with you here. So it is aiming left. And so I'm kind of thinking, well, maybe isn't it negative then? What's the velocity of C in the X direction? Nothing. Now notice this is velocity of B with respect to C in the X direction. I don't want X direction. I want the original. I want it without X in it. Well, couldn't I rewrite this as we've been doing as velocity of B with respect to C without X by just modifying it with sine or cosine? So at first, my first thought was, oh, they're equal. They're both the same speed, but no, velocity of B with respect to C isn't moving in the X direction. We aren't so lucky. It's not moving in the X direction, is it? It's moving up there at an angle. What do we have to do to modify B with respect to C to be, to be in the X direction? It's at a 30, 40 degree angle. I need X, I need the adjacent, that's cosine. I need to modify it with the cosine of 34. Now, before I, I'm gonna go ahead and write this down, but. You should feel utterly lost right now. <laughs> so if that's what you feel, then it's like, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's kind of short, short <laughs> I wish I wish there was one. <laughs> so is it where you find the y portion of it and then get the magnitude of whatever else? Get the original GD or the respect to C? Is that can you do it that way? There may be. Yeah, I gotta think about that. So you'll get using the x as a number from that equation, and then you do the y direction, and that should be another number. And then square root both of them, uh, square both of them together, and then take the square root, give you the overall velocity. Yeah, and that that might work. I mean, you have to look at this as the same as everything in life. In other words, you know, I survived it. Whatever it is you're trying to learn, I survived the first time and then eventually you perfect that and then someone's like well you know you can also do it this way and you're like oh well and then you practice it that way and then pretty soon you have like all these options of you know how you can make a basket or how you can shoot a gun or how you can run a rapid or whatever you know so it's like you can see that if we spent you can see we could spend 
three weeks on this if we wanted to and you know, try to get really good at it. You, you also can probably see we're in a pretty deep corner of the universe. I'd be willing to bet if you surveyed 100 engineers and said, how often do you use this knowledge? They would say zero times in my 30 years of service. This is complicated. And you know, there's probably simulations for it and so forth. But again, it's really talking about if you back it up again to the fact that this is just a motor to say, well, you know, stuff that's moving also accelerates. And so could I figure out what acceleration is happening over there? It's just neat to see that it can be done, you know. But you're gonna have to study this, obviously. You're gonna have to think about this, you're gonna have to go back over and look at this. My advice would be just survive it, <laughs> you know, the best you can, like copy my example, follow, follow the steps I kind of took. And so in hindsight, I guess you could say we didn't really feel like we needed to take that approach, but maybe there is a way to do it that way. I don't know. Okay, well, if that's true, then let's see. All I got to do then is take 7.42 and divide by the cosine of 34, right? When I do that, I get 8.95. And I guess technically it would be negative. And I am being lazy about units. I haven't even looked at that this whole time, but notice it's meters and seconds. And so that'd be meters per second if I cared. That's exactly right. So now I can throw it in up there. I can, oh, notice it doesn't matter because I'm squaring it. <laughs> so it had it been positive, negative in this case, who cares? Because it's squared. So that's kind of fun squared divided by the radius of 5.8. I got a So now looking back at my original two equations for unknowns, I just literally figured out, I didn't find brand new equations, fortunately. I actually found literal constants for those, for these three. I found this number right here and I found this one, which is both places, right? Mm -hmm. Thirteen point eight two. So in a sense, you could say I had, you know, four equations, four unknowns, because at one time, you know, there was an equation here. But, but again, notice how ugly that was. Like, that was a fairly complicated equation. So what does it hang on? It hangs on the fact that we have a velocity equation that, that tells us about how normal acceleration relates to linear velocity. And that's, that's how I got out of this mess. Okay, so all I need to do is plug and chug then. I'm going to grab all of this equation right here, duplicate it. Drag it down below. That's our first equation. Get rid of all that extraneous hoo ha. That's my first equation. And I can say now that this number is replaceable with 13.82, right? But that's it. I didn't know anything about tangential. So that's it. That top equation is still one equation, two unknowns. All right. Equation one. So that's not very encouraging. I wonder what's happening with equation two. Let's go grab that dude. Drag it down into the cellar. Get rid of extraneous junk. And I also can throw 13.82 in here, but then that other one gave us this one, right? Which was 36.73. Is that positive or negative? 
making sure. Interaction. So if we have a negative, I mean, a B, with that negative sign up front, it could actually be a positive. Yeah, well, based on this equation, notice it actually comes out positive. Remember, in this world, yeah. positive is aiming toward the center of the circle. It's not up, down, right, left. I think that's what's going on here. But, yeah. but this can never come out negative based on the form of this equation, right? Because I'm squaring it and then dividing by a radius. Yeah. Well, I think I don't. I don't think I have to worry about it. But that wasn't that wasn't obvious. Thirty six point seven three. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. So armed with these two equations now, what what's what's finally good news? Yeah, I got two equations, two unknowns. And even better, the bottom one doesn't even have two unknowns. So I can actually solve the bottom one all by itself because there's only one unknown left. And as soon as I know that, then I'm going to throw that answer back in up here, and then it'll allow me to find that last tangential acceleration. So I kind of own I own what's happening now. Woo. Oh my gosh. Brutal. So brutal. So this equation pops out. Kind of don't trust what I have sitting in front of me note wise. So I'm going to just do it myself. So let's see, to get that alone, aren't I going to have to take 36.73? I'm going to add two to the other side, and then I'm going to add 13.82, but multiplied by the sine of 56, and that'll get rid of everything on that side, and then I can divide by the sine of 34. When I did that, I got 89.36.73. Oops, that 36.73 was negative. And I left the negative off. So it is negative just by the way you set up your equations. Yeah, it's because I threw in 36.73, but then this negative was sitting in front of that from before. And so it made the 36, which was actually positive, it made it negative. And of course, it's extremely important to get whether this one is negative or not. Why is that? Because tangential acceleration is actually a speed change. And so what this is saying is it's slowing down. So here it actually kind of matters, right? Because you really don't care about normal accelerations because they're just direction changes. Again, that's the whip on this on the water skier that's behind the boat. How much whip is on them? How much? change of direction is there. I mean, it's going to smash you into the wall, but this is the one that pertains to a speed change. The one on the equation we were just answering, and the answer was decelerated. Yeah, and, and at this point, I, haven't, I don't even remember what the question was that was originally asked. It's just I've, I've figured out everything that's going on, and so whatever is the problem wants to know, I know all the accelerations now and so forth, so I'll be able to answer whatever I need to answer. So then if I go back to the top, I got everything up there. So let's see, notice it's negative, negative. I'm throwing a negative number in to this equation, but then it was negative, so that's gonna become positive. So it'll be 41.62 times the cosine of 34. And then I'll be subtracting 13.82 times the cosine of 56. And then the other side is a negative. So I'll multiply everything by negative one. So I got negative 37.32, which does not match what I have sitting in my notes, but so I'm double checking. No, actually it is wrong. I needed a parenthesis after a cosine. Yeah, so I got 26.77, 78, 26.78. But then it turns negative. So acceleration of B tangent is negative 26.78. So it's also slowing down. So B is slowing down, and B with respect to C is also slowing down. Those two speeds that we found a while ago, remember those two speeds we found? 
back here. We found 7.42. That's what's happening with B. We just found out, yep, yep, it's that, and it's slowing down. This velocity down here was negative. It's slowing down. So we now know something, not just the speed at that moment. We even know how its speed's going to change now. Now, what was this problem even asking? Find the angular acceleration of link CB. Angular acceleration. Remember how that was alpha? Link CB. In our case, that's B as it rotates around C. Yeah, that's exactly right. So just like we said, this this crank arm CB has a angular speed. It also has an angular acceleration. So whatever that speed is, it's also slowing down or speeding up too. So I can see why somebody would want to know that, I guess is what I'm saying. It's like, yeah, I want to know how fast that's rotating because that's going to screw up the engine or whatever. That's exactly right. Didn't we say that that was related to, let's see. Better go down below since we've got a train of thought to follow here. Let's see, how did you get from angular to angular acceleration to linear acceleration? If I remember right, you just multiply it by R. That's the multiplier. So that was the formula we had. What's that? Yeah, this is just like normal. And I'm using lowercase a's for acceleration because it looks. Yeah, and it was velocity was the same thing. It was just angular velocity times radius would give you linear velocity. This is angular acceleration times radius gives you linear acceleration. Speed change acceleration. So do I know? Well, remember, we're talking about B as it rotates around C. So that was that radius 5.8, right? That's why it's important to kind of draw this into the picture. This was B as it rotates around C. This is acceleration of B as it rotates around C. So that's 5.8. What's the linear acceleration? Yeah, I have the tangential and the normal. Which one do we want? Or do we want both of them? This is tricky. Because here we're talking about literally a speed change, not a direction change. So we actually only want the tangential because angular speed is rotational and that's affected by whatever the acceleration is, but only the ten, tangentials, the, the change of direction. So it actually isn't both of them. It's just that one. And look, we just figured it out. It was 41.6. So if I divide those, I get 7.2 roughly, and it'd be negative. So angular acceleration of B with respect to C is approximately negative 7.2. And in this case, that'd be radians per second per second. So that tells us it's slowing down as well. And by the way, really fast. Because seven radians is like a lap. 6.28 is one lap. And so this is slowing down by one lap a second. Wow, that's slowing down fast. Huge, it's so complicated. What else was it asking up here? Second thing it was asking is for the acceleration of B itself. And that makes sense because B is actually the thing that's doing the moving. Notice there's two accelerations for B. I'll draw over the top of them. There's that acceleration of B and there's that acceleration of B. Oops, I did the wrong ones, didn't I? Good that I did that, just make you think. 
that wasn't on purpose. That's acceleration of B and that's acceleration of B. So in my opinion, we did those, like we have them. Now, in the back of the book, to get one acceleration out of those, you have to do the Pythagorean theorem on them to turn it into one. But it, see, oh, it seems so dumb to me to do that because if you add those vectors, I'll erase this, but if you add those two vectors, it's gonna be some vector that kind of aims over there somewhere. But now you've lost the speed change version and the direction change version and you turn it into one number that doesn't have a lot of meaning. So in my opinion, it's like we we found those already. How about we just say done? I'll go ahead and write them down down below because I A B T A B N. Did we know those? Like where, you know, I don't know where was the calculation for those. There's one of them. A B T was negative twenty six point eight. So I'm only writing it down just because I wasn't really thinking about what I was being asked. And we, I think using the same process, we found acceleration of B in the N direction. Oh yeah, there it is, 36, 36.73, right? A, B, N, A, B, T, 36.73. So we could do Pythagorean on there on the nose, but we're like, nah. nah, let's not do that. I only say that because if there's some book problem that you might look in the back and get it wrong, so to speak. But yeah. I know. Why'd you even teach? Like, I could have just been doing my homework. Why? Why did you waste our time with something that was so obvious? <laughs> okay. So based on where we are, given the fact that we have, you know, fifteen minutes, um, let's take a look at. Really, all I want to do is like, let's do this again, but just with another problem and try to get our brain around it. Um, notice this is the same type of problem. It's no different, but what is a little different? Notice I let B move a little bit. It's like not as convenient to the location. So B is in a more random location. And then of course I turned the cylinder so it was going horizontal, but you know that doesn't really make a huge difference. But for the most part, this is the same type of problem. But let's at least take the time to see if we can set up those original two equations, kind of write out what they would look like. So we'll get to the, and the part that's gratifying about this is we're going to get to the two equations for unknowns part again. And then we'll have to use those normal acceleration equations to get the rest of it. But we can at least get started. My advice would be, let's finish this. Because because what I'm going to do for the test is like, I'm going to give you that question, a question like that. Boom, tell me everything. You see what's happened down there at C, right? In terms of velocity and acceleration. Yep. All right. Well, then what's happening at B? What's up there with respect to velocity and acceleration, both velocity and acceleration? And I'll I'll break it on the test into two parts, like rather than just say go and like this, which is you know even harder. I'll give you the velocity question first. I'll say, hey, look, you know, the velocity, I don't want to even have two in it. Like I'll I'll just not have that there and I'll say, hey, look at that. C is moving at four feet per second. Okay, well then what's happening at B? Go figure that out with your velocity equations and, you know, get that all done and you know everything about velocity. Okay, well then switch now, switch to acceleration and you'll need the velocity. We, we, we went back to get that a second ago, right? So it's like, well, in this case, you'll have it already done. Um, maybe to, to kind of model that in the test, maybe we'll just do it that way here. So we said, let's see, this is, yeah, same even letter. So we say, hey, you want to know what's going on up there at B? 
since that's the follower, well, guess what? It's the same as what's going on at C, but then you also have to consider that B has got to rotate around C. These equations are on your note sheet. You don't have to have that memorized. So let's take care of velocity first. Okay, cool. And we said that we really need to consider this horizontally in the x direction, and we also need to consider this vertically in the y direction. Write two equations for that, and that'll get us going. That's, that's kind of what we said. And so, okay, cool. Um, but we said what's kind of going on up there is, is fairly complicated. Remember, as I said a minute ago, your What does this equation represent? You want to know what's happening at B? That's what you want to know? Well, guess what? It's exactly what happened to C is what's happening at B. So what did C do? Move left. Okay, well, then the entire connecting rod, B, C, just moved to the left. But then we said, well, that can't be. We can't let that stand. That's not going to be the case. And so in order for it to actually stay on the circle, the second thing it's going to have to do is rotate in that direction to get back where it's supposed to be, right? So that's the second part of this equation, B rotated around C to get back where it actually belongs. And so notice that rotation, the crank arm is actually rotating right clockwise in this case. So it helps to draw that out, it helps to reason that out. Because now I can say, I know that this is the direction of B as it rotates around C, 90 degrees to that thing around which it's rotating. Mm -mm. Because remember, it first went here, and then it had to rotate to the right to get back onto the circle. So it's going the other direction. This is exactly backwards to what just happened a second ago. If you're just guessing, you got two choices. It either went left or it went right. It won't change the math, but you might get a negative when you should get a positive. That's why it's kind of cool to actually understand this formula right here and literally watch it happen so that you get that drawn in the right direction. So do you see how it's actually rotating to the right? It first slid out. It first slid exactly like C slid, which put it here. And then it's like, well, it can't stay there. That doesn't make sense. So it doesn't have to rotate to the right to get back on point. That's why it's going right over here. Okay. And since, since C is moving left, is it, isn't it a little bit more obvious that B is also moving well in the opposite direction? It's actually counterclockwise and so wouldn't this be wouldn't this be the direction that b b's velocity is moving and that would be 90 degrees so it's like there's my two velocities up there <clears throat> cool well, let's get some angles involved then so we can actually kind of work this out well let's see b e is 62 degrees i am told So I'm looking over at the other picture going, whoa, how 62 degrees gonna get over there? You know, what's, how do I get 62 to be anywhere up in, you know, what I need? I'm not really seeing it. Um, and then I'm told that theta is 70 degrees. Oh, I know. So, I don't know. Anybody have any good ideas? I think uh, get the seventy degrees all the way across the center of the beam and get the right angle. Mm -hmm. So take the seventy across to where? Oh, like way out here. Yeah, that's true. Except for then that would tell me this is twenty out here, which really isn't part of the angles I need. I really need angles that are coming off of this. So you're absolutely right. 
one thing that's we're just trying to find some angles up here. In other words, we need some angles up here because we don't really like we can see that B and BC are not going left and right up and down. They're not going in the X and Y directions. So we're going to have to figure out we're going to have to break those into their components. Let me let me skip ahead a little bit down here or let me rewrite the equation. So we know the other side of the 70 is 20. So do you agree that all of these are X's because this is horizontal? And if I move down here to vertical, isn't that the same thing except for these are all Y's? So the problem is I need to break the velocity of B into its X and Y component. Right now it's going a totally weird direction. I need BC in its X and Y components. And so if I don't have angles up there, I'm not gonna be able to do that. You see what I'm saying? So, and you know, I look at the angles I was given and I'm kind of like, thanks for nothing, man. Like I can't, I can't see. But let me tell you one thing that's always kind of helpful. If you extended this line up right here straight, and then you ran a line over here horizontally, does it make sense? This would also be 62 degrees. So see how 62 can slide up there. And if I do the same thing with 70, if I extend this line a little bit and I run a horizontal line here. Does you see that 70 can slide up here? So you see how I just got them both up there? Now, does that help? Yeah, see how that blue right angle? That means that means this angle right here is also 90, which means 62 and 28. That 28 degree angle right there is going to allow me to get BC. That's the one I needed. You agree with that? It's like, bam, 28. Sweet. What about over? Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. So, isn't that, does that mean this is 20? And by the way, that's not a coincidence. That was the same as the 20 we calculated out there earlier. So, that's 20. Well, that's the one I need, right? Like, isn't that? Isn't that 20 the one I need? So I got 20 and 28 now, and that's that's the conversion. I got the angles I need. Sweet. So that slide the angle up there kind of thing is, is sometimes a cool way to do this instead of kind of trying to draw right triangles. But, but again, it's just creativity. Okay, so let's step back a little bit now. Can we, and remember what we have right now is literally two equations with six unknowns. Every one of those is a different unknown. But if I can rewrite, let's go to blue. If I can rewrite this as just the velocity of BC with the trig modifier, and I can write this as the velocity of BC with the trig modifier, then I just got rid of one of the unknowns. And notice we know it's happening at C. C is moving left in the x direction negative four and as a consequence not moving up and down at all right so it's like oh good there's there's two of my six unknowns and then velocity of bc got rid of an unknown what about the velocity of bx and the velocity of by oh isn't that the same concept in other words if i can rewrite this as just the velocity of b with the trig modifier and this with the velocity of b with the trig modifier then i'm only going to have two equations two unknowns so now that we have the 20, the 20 and the 28, let's do BC. If I need X, if I need X of that velocity of BC up there, what's the trig modifier with that 28 degree angle? Cosine of that 28. And therefore, without even looking, the other one is going to be the sine of 28. What about X? What about VB? Same thing, 20 degree angle adjacent to it is X, that's cosine. So to get X, I need cosine of 20, which means the other one is the sine of 20. Yeah, let's see, do I have, yeah, so let's go back and put negatives. B is left and down. So that means those are both negative. Thank you, because by the way, I would have actually forgot that. And BC is 
right and up. So it's X is positive, but it's Y is down. Now, remember a minute ago on that horrible problem we did, didn't we need the velocity of B and the velocity of BC? Well, hey, look, we're just, we're getting them. We're going to get those two things and they'll be part of what we're going to need later on. So where I'd like to get is like, let's write these two down really quick. And then let's at least write down the acceleration equation. And then my advice would be, we meet Thursday and finish this question. But, you know, you can say, eh, I'll study on my own. Don't show up. I guess I'll just put it this way. I'll show up and finish this question Thursday. And if you show up, then I'll show you. If you don't, then I'll listen to music and not do it. <laughs> um, I mean, first, it, that's probably what you want to do. Is that true or not? This is hard. And, yeah. and then the other thing we might do, because it won't take us the whole period to finish that, would be look at the review, too. Um, if I was you, I probably... I'd probably look at what we did the first part of class today and go over it and try to kind of go in my mind like, okay, that makes sense. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. And try to make sense of it. Um, but until you see one, you know, until you see us finish this example, it might be hard to do the review because I do have a review question like this that you can do before the test. So the best thing would be to leave here thinking, okay, I kind of get this now. Try to do the review on your own. If you screw it up, look at what I did instead and see if you can learn something from that. And then, then you can take the test later that night and do what you want. But. So we got this thing down to two equations, two unknowns, and in the interest of time, the velocity using a matrix in this case, I've got the velocity of B at 2.53 feet per second. That's going to be some number we'll need later on. And I've got the velocity of B as it rotates around C at 1.84. Per second. I think those are both positive. At least I have them, I have them written down as positive. Oh, wait, no. On this portion, uh, the negative means that uh, either slowing down or speeding. Uh, speeding like that. No, it, it's because they're vectors and they're literally pointing a certain direction. That is just the speed in the direction they're pointed. It's kind of only positive and negative because now we're in circular land. Like if you're in circular land, velocity B points in the direction of travel. So it's like this is pointing over here. Therefore, that's positive because we're in circle land, if, if that makes sense. But again, does it does it matter? I mean, is it the end of the world if one of those is negative and it should be positive? Not really. But they both come out positive here. Let me double check. Negative, zero, negative, 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 positive. Yeah, they, they come they come out positive on their own. Okay, so we'll need those later, right? But we don't need them right now. Remember there was those squared over their radiuses that gave us the normal accelerations. So that's gonna be the other two equations. I'm like, I'm, that's really cool. I have them now. Let's see if we can quickly write out the acceleration equations for ourselves, and then we'll quit. I'll go a little bit long, but not too bad. So what's going on up there at B? It's the same as what's going on at C plus the acceleration of B as it rotates around C. But because acceleration is two components, I've got to break that into its tangential and normal components. So quickly, let's just get I'm going to go to a different color here. Let's quickly do this with X. And do this with Y. So as it stands right now, we have two equations, eight unknowns. 
algebra takes over and we say that's not going to fly. I need eight equations, eight unknowns, right? I got to do stuff to get rid of that. I can't have eight unknowns here. So the only problem we have is we the picture is a long ways away, right? Let's see. So let's go back and add a few things to it. Would you agree that this is where you would locate acceleration of B with respect to C tangential? It's in the same direction. And then this would be acceleration B with respect to C normal. So I'm adding that to the picture. I'm adding acceleration to our previous picture. Would you agree that acceleration of B tangential is in the same direction that velocity was? That's the direction the speed change version. But then perpendicular to that through here is acceleration of B normal. So it's like there's the picture that I've got. I need to work with, and I've got the angles up there that I need. So Maybe I can get away with leaving it there and just kind of looking at it, zooming in on it a little bit. So can I do anything with that X equation? Do I? Do I know acceleration of, I know acceleration of CX. Don't I know that one? That's speed, that's two and it's going left. So it'd be negative two. Now remember the other thing is like I know that constant, but everything else I'm just trying to get rid of the x's. I'm I'm okay with acceleration of b, acceleration of b, acceleration of b c t. I just don't want these x's here because remember I'm going to be able to get rid of the y's down here, and that's how I'm going to get these to talk to each other. Right now they're not talking to each other. So the question is, could I rewrite this as just the acceleration of B with some modifier? No, because this is literally the acceleration of B in the X direction. Oops, I can look right here. So, and this is, this is horrible. Like I need the acceleration of B in the X direction. Does that have an X component to it? It does. That'd be the cosine of 20, right? But but it's like that's tangential though. Notice I don't I don't have an acceleration of B all by itself. I have a tangential and a normal. Does this one have an X component to it? Yeah, cosine of 20. Does this one also have an X component this time though? Yeah. It does as well, which is not good. So let's see here. Given that this is, given that this is 90 right here, given that that's 90 and this, let's see, what angles do I know? Yeah, I mean, there's a, a number of ways I could do this, but notice across the top, across the top, I have 70 and 62, and that's a straight line. So that's 132, which leaves 48 for this little, piece right here. Do you agree with that? Yeah. And if that's 48, then this is also 48 straight below it because those two kind of cross each other, if you will. And since that blue 90 degree angle right there, that's 48, then this angle right here would be 42. So that means the angle all the way down to here is actually 70, which basically means I should have thought of that before because there's 70 right there and right across from it is 70. So I should have been, I should have just seen 70. 
Now, the reason I said that is because that's how far this is off of kind of level. It's 70 degrees off. So it's actually, sadly, both of both the tangential and the normal have an X component to them. Wow. Wait, so what you're saying is this is actually not so great because there's a tangential component as long as you modify it by the cosine of 20, right? Here's yeah. tangential, cosine is horizontal, but then I also have normal, but it'd be cosine of 70. So that one's left, that's exactly right. And then there would even be a normal component, but it'd be multiplied by the cosine of 70 and it's right. And so that's actually replaceable with like two unknowns, like this is not good. <laughs> like it sort of made it worse. Getting rid of that X made it worse. I think I'll finish these two up here and quit because I'm going too far over. I'd love to finish both just so you can stare at it and think about it, but. Okay, so what about what about this one? In other words, I kind of want to do the same thing here. I want to replace that with just acceleration of B with respect to C tangential and not have X in it. And there it is. There's acceleration of B with respect to C tangential, but to get the X version of it, that'd be the cosine of 28. That's my modifier. Do you agree with that? because it's just tangential. In other words, we already split this one apart. Like a second ago, it split apart. This one was already split apart, if you will. So that is fine, as long as I multiply by the, by the cosine of 28. And what about this one? What about normal? I'd like that to be acceleration of B with respect to C, just normal without an X component. Well, where is acceleration of B with respect to C normal? Oh, it's, it's right there, right? So what's its modifier? Well, based on what I did a second ago, if, if this angle right here is 62, then the one across from it is also going to be 62. So this whole angle right here, just like this whole angle over here was 70, um, this whole angle right here is going to be 62. And there's more than one way you can see that. In other words, this green angle right here is 90. So if this is 48, then that'd be 42. 42 and 20 is 62. So I'd be modifying that by the cosine of 62. Now I got to think positive and negative. Let's see, tangential was going right. So it's positive but the normal is actually going left. So this one would be negative. You agree with that? Um. But that's actually kind of a bad news because it does indeed have four unknowns. Yeah, Remember, that's okay. If I can have if I can have two equations and four unknowns, that's where I, that's where I was earlier. That's what I had before. I had two equations, four unknowns. And remember, the other two are the other two equations are going to come from these velocities that we yeah, found. Um, What's your take? Do you want to see the second one really quick or we're already 15 minutes over? Let's do it tomorrow. I don't care. It's going to go fast. Let's do it. So what about acceleration in the Y? Well, I'm actually, I'm not even looking up above. I'm just going to look at what I wrote a second ago. Exactly. So I have acceleration of BT up above. It was the cosine of 20. So down here, it's going to be the sine of 20. And then I had acceleration of B in the N direction. It was cosine of 70, which means here it's going to be the sine of 70. 
And then I, yeah, I do need to think positives and negatives here. So let's see, tangential. Acceleration B tangential, it's going left and down. So it's negative, normal's going down. They're both going down, does that make sense? They're both going down. So they're both negative. Yeah, C is not allowed to move in the Y direction. So it's zero, that's awful nice. And then I'm gonna steal this information from up above too. What did we do up above? This was acceleration of B with respect to C. Tangential up above was modified with the cosine of 28. So this is gonna be modified with the sine of 28. Up above, this acceleration of B with respect to C normal was modified by the cosine of 62. So it'll be modified by the sine of 62. And let's see, are those positives or negatives? So tangential and normal. So tangential is going down. Normal is going down. So they're, they're all negatives as well. So the two blues are going down. They're negative as well. Negative. negative. Notice every single thing is negative. I'm going to go ahead and leave the negatives in, but I'd probably just multiply both sides by a negative one and they'd all be positives. But does it make sense? That's my second equation now. So negative acceleration of B tangent sine of 20 minus acceleration of Bn sine of 70 equals negative acceleration of B with respect to C tangential sine of 28 minus acceleration of B with respect to C normal sine of 62. Two equations or unknowns. In the higher we were on the plane right, velocity of the for the line and not to the left. Uh huh. This is where it would have hit us, where we would have gotten ourselves going. Nice job. That's exactly right. Do you agree then that now we're going to be able to use those velocities to find those accelerations right there because they're the normals? And since they're shared in the equations up above, I'm going to be able to throw those in. And then my two equations for unknowns just turn into two equations to unknowns, and I'll be able to do it. Now, the good, the good thing about getting to that point now is at least we have seen two examples. We're not quite complete, but we've at least kind of seen two examples that how to survive this. And since I'll post this even incomplete tonight, this would allow you to, I mean, I, I would recommend you try to finish this yourself based on what we did before. Try to finish this one yourself. Um, then we'll look at it really quickly. And then you might even wade into the review, the review problem or up to you. Yeah. 